Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So in this video, we're going to be using Ignition and I'm going to be showing you a HMI that I've created. So it's literally just this one screen HMI. If you've seen my previous videos, I've got a light stack whereby it will show me the level of the tank and give me either a red, yellow or green. So if my tank is empty like it is now, which means that my low level sensor can't detect any liquid and my high level sensor can't detect any liquid, then I get a red. If, however, my low level sensor detects some liquid, then I get a yellow. And so what I've done is I've created the HMI just to say, look at this tag. If this tag is zero, then show the tank is zero and show red up here. If that is one, then show the tank is being, you know, a third full and show yellow. And then if I get the other sensor, then it will show me that my tank is full kind of. Uh, and then I've got a green here as well. And then I've also got it so that uh, it will show me my e-stop. So if I press my e-stop, you can see there, it tells me that my e-stop has been pressed. If I release it, it gets released. And then the main purpose of the program was to detect a fast fall. So that means to say that you've had your tank full and then you lose your high level sensor. I think this is my high level one. Yep, so I've lost my high level sensor. There you go. And then if you lose your low level one too quickly, it will then trigger a high level fault to say, sorry, a fast fall detected. And so it's a really, really simple HMI. And I've also got it so that the HMI isn't just reading data from the PLC, but it can also write to the PLC by, if I click this fault reset button, it will then clear that fault. And then I can go back to filling my tank back up. Cool. Yeah, so this uses ignition um, vision. So you've got ignition vision and you've got ignition perspective. And so the thing is, since I'm using a 1200, with the Siemens S7 1200s, you can't actually browse tags. So you need to create every tag individually as an OPC UA tag. But ignition works off of OPC UA, which is, if you don't know, it's like this open standard protocol, which was developed by like Microsoft, I think in the 70s. But it just means that the SCADA software, in this case, ignition is able to look at what's going on on the PLC. And so this is the ignition designer. So in here, you, ignition has two different versions, vision and perspective. This vision, which I'm using is actually the, sim the simple, very basic version of ignition. So it's, I mean, it's, to, in my opinion, it's still very good. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it is definitely, you can, you can definitely get much better graphics and whatnot using ignition perspective. Not gonna give you like a full on um, demo of this thing, but if you have a look on the left here, here are the tags that I've created. So literally just a very few tags. I've even got access to, so if I open this up, I've got access to my clock bit on my PLC. So all you gotta do is just reference the PLC that you're talking to and then what memory location. Now, unfortunately, just the nature of Siemens, I believe, I think with other PLCs, you can actually browse inputs and outputs, but here you can only access inputs. So if I actually open up to your portal, I'll show you that I have to actually move everything into a data block. So all my inputs and all my outputs are going into data blocks so that I can read them. So here's my PLC code. And one thing you'll see is that it's just, it's nowhere near as clean as using just Siemens standard HMIs. But the thing is just one tiny little seven inch HMI is like 700 quid. And to get like a decent sized screen, you're talking about a grand, a grand and a half for a screen. So it's very expensive. So the fact that you can now use OPC UA and actually just pass it over to, you know, a full on um, HMI on your computer and actually control. So now if I trigger a fault, I can just go back to my PLC code here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trigger a fault. Uh, do, 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 I don't want to do that. Fast full fault. Turn that on. So right now I've got a fault. Oh, I've turned off. Okay. So right now I've set a fault. So you can see here I've got fast full detected. Yes, yeah, so I've got the fast full fault set. And then what I'm doing is I'm just calling up when I click on this fast full, this fault reset button, it just literally just turns on M.1.6. So I've got here, click that. It does it, it turns it on for one shot, which I wanted to show you, but I can do if I can minimize this. And now what I can just, if I go back to my desktop, I've actually got an icon here, which I can just click level sensor, fast full detection. It's got a little image of a tank, which looks brilliant. Starts up ignition, the client. So look at that. I've got a HMI there that I can boost up from my desktop in a few seconds instead of paying Siemens a grand and a half for a screen. I can actually control the HMI from inside the designer. So if I go to preview mode here, now I can actually click the button. Oh, why did it say bad gateway? Yeah, okay. All right, and then now there you can see this button is just brilliant. It will just turn on the whatever input I set it to. 
We'll turn it on for like half a second and then turn it off. And so I can control it all inside the designer, press stop, and then I can move stuff around and whatnot. It's pretty amazing, really. So like as an example, if I... Yeah, so I'm rambling now, but I love this. This The fact that you can do all of this is just brilliant. And I could show you it in full action, actually, how it works. Oh, actually, probably the thing to show you uh, is just like how you can make expressions. So if I go to this tank here now and I look at its value, it's basically using a script here, which I've written. And it's Python, so it's a bit confusing, but I'll show you the layout of Python if statements. Come to here, logical. Sorry. No, come to here, logic, if I can get it, and then if statement. So you've got if, and then your condition, and then a comma, and then what you want to do, what you want to return if it's true, and then comma again, and then what you want to return if the, if, if the condition is false. So I've got if, and then my low level sensor is equal to one, and my high level sensor is equal to one, then set the value to 70. I can make that, for example, I don't know, 100. And then if, the low level sensor is equal to one and that high level sensor is equal to zero then set the value to 30 or 35 and i can set that for example to i don't know 30 or 20 even and then if both of those are untrue both of those are false then set the value to zero so save that and then upload that and as you can see now right now it's taking the tank to be full i just click update on top here boom my tank's full so here right now i've got some liquid and then i don't know which one's my high level and low level that is my low level and this is my high level okay so right now tank should be full yep and then if i lose my high level tank goes to like whatever it is 25 25 percent can't remember what i sent it at 20 and if i lose both goes to zero and there it's triggered a fault and so if i want to reset that fault go back at the bottom come over back to my hmi and then click fault reset boom works beautifully so that's ignition vision hopefully i'll do an ignition perspective uh hmi soon and you're going to see that those are significantly nicer but it's a lot more complicated so i'm still working on it but yeah that's my ignition vision hmi thanks for watching guys take care bye bye